Hello and welcome to my How the German Chancellor is Chosen video. The German election for Chancellor is more involved than our election for President. We put our votes for one of two candidates. These are distributed towards a electoral college. Whoever gets the most electoral college votes wins the presidency. Ta-da! The end. But it's more complicated in Germany. What happens is that people vote for their favorite parties and because they have like more than 10 parties, each party gets a proportion of Congress or Parliament. And because they have so many parties, usually one party can't get a more than 50% majority, so they have to form coalitions with each other to get more than 50%. And then they sort of jostle among each other and have a secret ballot, and the newly elected congressmen or parliament members choose their new chancellor. The leader of the larger party in the coalition will become chancellor. The leader of the smaller party in the coalition will become junior chancellor or vice chancellor. So no one in Germany directly votes for their new chancellor. They vote for the political party that they hope will negotiate for a new chancellor. So let's go over the major political parties that will come into play during the election in September. The first party is the Christian Democratic Union, or CDU, which has a sister party called the Christian Social Union, or CSU, which only exists in Bavaria. This is the more conservative party of Germany. The CDUs are equivalent of the Republican Party. If they have a majority, then they will probably elect Angela Merkel, who is the current chancellor. Angela Merkel first became chancellor when I was in high school. I remember she oversaw the formation of the European Union, helped the European Union ride a near economic collapse, and instead made their economy flourish, and oddly for some time has been very anti-immigration and pro-integration, that is, they really wanted the minorities in Germany to integrate. The last year is about the refugees and a little bit of a break from traditional CDU values. However, as of now, when I'm making the video, she has a very big lead in the polls. And I think that's because the CDU is now starting to solve or address the refugee problem. The borders are being better protected, and there is negotiation and money given towards other countries like Egypt and Tunisia for them to take back refugees. It all takes money, but they do take them back. The second biggest party is the Social Democratic Party, or SPD. If they win, their chancellor candidate will be Martin Schultz. SPD is our equivalent of the Democratic Party. They are more leftist and more liberal. In February, Martin Schultz had a media blitz, and it seemed like he would beat Angela. Um, <laughs> but then people started to learn more about him. I think people turned against him because he used to be part of the Brussels European Union lobbyist group. Um, <laughs> so he wouldn't make Germany great again. Instead, he would probably make the migrant crisis crisis worse. Angela's been deporting more migrants who are not there legally, and Schultz's party is against deportations. So let's go on to the other smaller political parties that don't have a chance for chancellorship, but can be useful in coalition formation. A third major party is the left party, or the Linke, and these <laughs> are uh, what we would call unironic communists. <laughs> They're not a fan of capitalism, and they want more social welfare, uh, market regulation, that sort of thing. The fourth party is the Green Party, or the Grüne. They're into environmentalism and saving the environment. But in recent years, they have also tried to have a more leftist push on social issues. Think mainly their environment, though. A new party that has been getting tons of attention is the Alternative for Germany, or AFD. They are a right-wing party. They are very nationalistic. They are anti-immigrant, anti-Islam, anti-Muslim. <laughs> they want to deport people, and they want to encourage migrants to return to their original countries. They had a surge in popularity, but I think they started to dip a little when the CDU started incorporating their agenda and also started to increase deportations and border controls. 
That's one of the reasons that the CD has been so popular. Usually they would take the most popular aspects of the smaller parties and put them into their platform. There's also the Free Democratic Party, or the FDP. They would be what we would call libertarians, who represent the business class. They haven't been doing too well in the last elections. I think they're trying to figure out what their platform is and try to win more voters. <laughs> the thing with German Parliament is that you have to get at least 5% of the people's vote before you can get a single seat in their Congress. At the 2013 elections, they actually got less than 5% of the vote, which means they didn't get any representation in the German Parliament. Whoops! So, they really gotta figure out what's going on. Well, that's an overview of all the major political parties in Germany and their chances for chancellorship. Thanks for watching!